and uh, welcome to two senior representatives from the host country. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, to my right is uh, Yeltsin uh, Bertinov, who is the Minister of Health for Kazakhstan, uh, and across, sitting across from me from is uh, Ruslan uh, Yantabayev, uh, who is the Vice Minister of Finance uh, for Kazakhstan. Um, we heard this morning from the Vice President uh, about some of the progress that's been made in cancer and cancer control, uh, in particular a focus around the National Cancer Control Programme, a focus around uh, bringing uh, new financing to the table, a focus around primary uh, care as well, which I thought was really interesting um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a pillar of the whole approach. Can I just start by sort of asking, obviously for a long time, Kazakhstan has had quite high out-of-pocket expenditure around uh, healthcare, and now you're hoping to change that with uh, an engagement and an investment into universal healthcare. Tell us how those plans are evolving and how you plan effectively to, to roll universal healthcare out quickly. Uh, and within that, how you plan to manage the cancer control part of that. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yes, if we look at the data from 2016 from National Health Account Service System, you will see that out-of-pocket spendings in Kazakhstan are extremely high and um, uh, on the level of 42% from overall national health spending. So uh, the reason was that uh, f f in historically we had a tax-based uh, benefit package guaranteed from the state, which basically included all types of uh, primary care, secondary care, even tertiary care, and growing list of free medications. So, but at some point with economical difficulties and devaluation of uh, local currency, uh, the, the, the volume of guarantees were actually even higher than real funding. Uh, and uh, the, we, we saw growing uh, waiting lists for services and uh, we saw people uh, not able to get uh, uh, receive the you know, basic services within existing benefit package. So, and as a result, it in the growth of uh, out-of-pocket spending. So to reach that program in 2015, uh, we uh, finally made a decision to launch additional uh, reform, so-called mandatory health insurance, social health insurance. Um, so the law was undertaken and we will start it 1st of January next year. So uh, within that, uh, we made a very important decision, political decision, uh, because we had this, this specific problem, uh, similar to many countries actually, the high level of uh, informal labor force. So two years ago when we were preparing to launch uh, reform, because initially it was 2018, we found out about uh, 3 million people are actually not uh, legally uh, employed. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a risk that we will throw out the system of uh, health coverage and UHC. So at that point we made this, okay, let's figure out who are those people and why it's happening and how we can uh, bring them into the system. And the second, let's look at the coverage. So what we will be providing for everyone and what we will be providing for insured people. Yeah. So that was direct message from our first president. So we reviewed our system and uh, we decided to keep a benefit package funded from uh, national budget. So for next year, it will be still on the level of 10% from the Republican budget. Uh, and that benefit package will uh, provide free services for every uh, citizen and even resident of country, not depending if he's uh, in, in participating in health insurance or not. So including cancer, right. primary care, emergency care. Um, above that, we will uh, launch a health insurance package, which is mandatory, uh, but we expect to cover at least 80% from first year. And this will help us to grow overall health funding by 60% starting from next year and reach uh, double it uh, by 2024. Uh, within that, we expect that uh, share of out-of-pocket spendings will uh, uh, drop from 42% to at least 35%. So, but the second thing I want to say that even without additional spending, you can actually really decrease uh, efficiency and out-of-pocket spendings. For example, we looked at the, what actually people buy um, from the out-of-pocket and we saw a lot of medications. So we digitalized our uh, prescription system for free medications, and it helped us actually to increase efficiency and 
uh, we saw that the uh, out-of-pocket spending decreed from 42, 42 to 37 percent already without like extra spendings from, from the state. So that's also a very powerful instrument, I would say, digitalization and make system more transparent so you can really reinvest your savings in the health system. Well, let me come to the Minister, uh, Vice Minister of Finance in a second to hear your perspectives around uh, the funding of this. But um, tell us a little bit about the National Cancer Control Program because that is now underway. Uh, you're now putting that together. It isn't, in fact, yet announced, is it? So what are the, I suppose, set of principles and guidelines that you're using to try and frame that within the context of the universal healthcare system? And what you, you, the, the Vice President mentioned this morning that your focus, particular focus would be around primary healthcare and a primary healthcare approach to it. Tell us how you're framing it. Absolutely, we uh, launched the program last year. It's four years program. And uh, I would say the main uh, scope will be about early detection. Yeah. And that's why it's um, about primary care. So if you look at the statistic, we have, a, I would say, average uh, mortality rate for cancer. And, but we see that uh, there is a higher level of uh, late diagnosing. Yeah. And that's why uh, 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 mortality and survival rate is lower than in, uh, I would say, average OECD countries. So that's why we decided to stress on early detection and to stress on in introducing uh, improvements in primary care level with screening programs, including uh, digitalization of the system, but also bringing new technology for uh, CT, uh, MRI, PET scanning, even molecular diagnostics uh, now became available through additional funding uh, from the state. And from a, the point of view of sort of helping your policy decisions, do you feel that you're, the data that you have around cancer is sufficient, or is that something you're also planning to improve as part of the National Cancer Program? control program? Um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, with this extensive digitalization program that we launched in, uh, in overall in economy and healthcare, we see that as more as you go forward, you see how much you have to do, still have to do. Yeah. So for screening programs, for example, it's, I mean, it was all on paper. Yeah. And sometimes, and the same as vaccination, the same as uh, all different types of services that we provide. Uh, as soon as you bring people to the system so they can use some technologies uh, to be involved and to give you feedback, you see much more efficiency. So the uh, issue is not only about uh, having those data, but linking every person to into the system to get his feedback and his participation. That's why we launched um, electronic health passports. Hmm. Just two days ago, we announced a mobile version free of charge so every person can look at his uh, records and uh, follow up and give his feedback. That should be enormously helpful, I think, in managing or building a database that allows you to sure, yeah. tweak policy. Were there certain cancers that you decided to tackle first in the National Cancer, or are you deciding to tackle first in the National Cancer Program, and, and why? Uh, well, of course, uh, we look at uh, uh, the most uh, you know, massive cases, and, yeah. uh, like uh, cervical cancer, breast cancer, uh, and uh, colorectal uh, yeah. that we need to improve because we see that how many patients we facing in the later stages. Uh, but also uh, other, uh, I would say, localizations which are not very common, but the, the technology and current international guidelines required to provide, for example, immune therapy, we went on that. So uh, just within one year, we introduced 25 more medications in the essential list because previously we cannot do that. Yeah. So, and they not only about the most common localizations, but almost all areas where we can actually do some improvement. So, Vice Minister, I mean, obviously there's a lot of spending going on. <laughs> um, how do you feel about that? Um, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, how you feel from a Ministry of Finance point of view, you're going to be able to maintain and sustain the kind of level of funding that is going to be needed for, for this ramp up in universal healthcare and cancer control in, in uh, Kazakhstan. Thank you very much. Of course, we understood that the implementation of UHS plan is uh, for our government is very, very important task. And uh, we, we understood also that we have to solve the issue that uh, we have to um, additional financing for, for this program. Mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, unfortunately, the 
spending uh, of total spending for healthcare industries about only about 3.7 percent of GDP it is not enough but it is much more less than it is uh, recommended and we analyzed and we worked with Ministry of Health how to improve this issue and uh, worked on the new compulsory uh, new uh, insurance system and first of all we have kept um, the this uh, Finding what was before this uh, insurance system and uh, uh, launched new uh, insurance fund. Uh, actually, this fund started to raise money from 1917. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, it was uh, uh, required from 2017. Yeah. 17, 17, yeah. Uh, all our employers uh, required to uh, deduct 1% of the uh, monthly income to this fund, and it was raised in 2018-19 to 1.5 percent. And next year we are planning to raise it to 2 percent. And uh, all employees also beginning from the next year will uh, contribute money to this fund, 1 percent. And like next year, 2 percent uh, from 21. Uh, it is important to uh, say that uh, the uh, contributions for 15. Uh, categories of uh, citizens, uh, such as uh, disabled people, full-time uh, students, uh, uh, pregnant women and mother with many children and others, will this contribution will be paid uh, from the government uh, budget. It is additional financing. And, and also, as the minister said, uh, those people that are outside of the formal uh, work system, employment system, people who are in the informal sector, would they also be covered as well? If, uh, they, if they are officially registered as an unemployed people, right. they will have uh, this opportunity. But also we introduce so-called joint social payment that very cheap and that will let you in into the system, not only health insurance but also social insurance right. for those who are in the informal system. And uh, we launched it early in January this year, yes, right. and now we have 167,000 people already in the system. So quite a good tool, although we expect uh, there are more people joining next year. So Vice Minister, I think it'd be interesting for this audience because I, I guess that most of this audience is a health audience. <laughs> um, it's not a financing audience. It's just um, how um, you plan as a finance ministry official for uh, investments in health. Um, and indeed, you know, how do you, how, what arguments are brought to you by the health minister to um, increase and drive health spending? Uh, fortunately, I want first to say that I am responsible uh, in the, our Minister of Finance for digitalization and uh, our minister uh, uh, couldn't take a part here. We apologize for it. And of course, uh, from the Minister of Finance uh, side, uh, as I said, we support, of course, we understood that it is very important ask, uh, task and uh, we uh, work together and one of the important uh, issue for us also to ensure the efficiency of uh, utilization of, of uh, funding that given for uh, health organization. Uh, uh, for example, I can say that uh, some uh, health organization um, spend money for very expensive uh, equipment that is not uh, fully util utilized and uh, this uh, c approach, uh, common approach when we working with uh, uh, this insurance funds will help organizations to uh, to use uh, this additional budgeting for uh, for teach the specialists to provide more effective and uh, services. So it was a point that yeah. um, I think Francesca was going to bring up today, but yeah. she didn't have enough time to. And that is a focus around creating and ensuring proper spending, um, efficiencies in yeah. spending, yeah. and the management yes. of those. Is that something that really is of concern? I mean, it must be of yes. huge concern to you. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a tension quite often, it seems to me, between um, the, uh, the financing of universal health coverage or health care and the financing within that of cancer and cancer control, particularly as you begin to roll out universal health coverage. How, how do you see that tension? Because quite often there are those advocates of cancer control that want to see more spending on cancer control and those advocates of universal health care that see, for example, the rollout of preventive measures, particularly in health care as a whole, as being more important. How do you 
How do you both kind of address that, um, that tension? Uh, well, I would say that uh, that's, that's a, a very good question, actually. And uh, this, the issue uh, always raised about, OK, how much we can afford to spend as a nation? And what would be the, the best uh, spending? How we can do it more smart? Where, what kind of services to provide? Of course, from uh, intuition uh, says us we have to spend more on prevention and uh, primary care, early detection, etc. But at the same time, you have growing number of uh, real patients, and you also have to provide minimal uh, standards of care. So. Uh, for, for, for this, for us, it was a very challenging political discussion uh, these uh, last couple of years about uh, introducing a new model and uh, being able to negotiate within the government to keep uh, you know, uh, uh, spending from tax base from the budget on the level of 10%. Mm. So because initially it was a very radical plan, you know, we will reduce uh, direct spending from the government and move, pay money to the health insurance fund and those who will be insured they will can get better uh, services but those who will be not insured they have to uh, be take care of themselves and pay themselves but uh, found it out that we have uh, quite a big amount of people I mean 20 percent of population uh, with the risk of falling out of basic service including cancer and that was a, a, a very big political decision and mm -hmm. that we are very happy and proud of that uh, uh, our leadership, our president, they decided to keep uh, uh, basic guarantees, mm -hmm. including full care for cancer mm -hmm. uh, within a uh, state uh, b funded benefit package. Yeah. Of course, uh, uh, because we are launching this reform, we have to look at uh, that very carefully. Uh, meaning that we have also moved some of the services that were declared into the health insurance package that will help that helped us actually to free up some money within the existing uh, public spendings of Minister of Finance that allows us to keep it. To, so that's it's always a negotiation. So um, from, uh, from, from, from the government perspective, we have a very, uh, I mean, joint vision and discussion on that always is always challenging because Ruslan just mentioned just very you know uh, top of the challenging questions they ask to the Minister of Health here about efficiency always about efficiency yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, and they mentioned about digitalization of uh, for example uh, uh, medications but also for even for equipment mm. uh, we are now trying to implement technology that you can uh, monitor how you use your CT scan effectively mm. and to uh, raise efficiency and when you I come and say you know we need three more cities in that region they say show me the data and that's a challenging issue so vice minister do you think the minister of health is spending money wisely yes I uh, absolutely <laughs> agree <laughs> <laughs> I, I said uh, we have uh, uh, what uh, all ideas what we discussed all our actions what will be made uh, under this uh, new uh, insurance fund uh, will help us to raise the budgeting for this um, healthcare industry, for example, f f from uh, 1.6 times. For example, now it's 1 trillion thing, and next year we are planning it will be 1.6 trillion thing because of this initiative. So, but of course, it's important not only to find new fu uh, budget funds, but also, as we said, uh, to use this uh, funding uh, more effectively. And uh, as we discussed today many times, the government spent a lot of time and prioritized the digitalization of all processes, especially for the uh, healthcare industry. And uh, last year, this year, the Minister of Health made a lot of efforts to digitalize all services. And today we have an examples when uh, we have di di remotely diagnosed some, uh, inf uh, some information about the disease and can uh, detect this disease in early stage and to not to make the treatment is so expensive if we don't do it in such manner. Well, clearly a huge amount of uh, thinking and thought has gone into, into this process. Uh, I really want to thank you very much, Minister, Vice Minister, for sharing that with us and uh, wish you all the best in the rollout of your, your systems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister.